Hey and welcome to today's video where we are going to look at how I structure my week when it comes to finding properties, finding, sourcing, booking them in and uh, getting them offered on. Now there is a whole process as to how that happens so I want to walk you through that, show you what it looks like so you can know how to approach it when you decided to get started yourself. So um, it's pretty straightforward for me because I know how to do it but for you if you are trying to manage your family, trying to manage your work-life balance, if you have parents that you're looking over, sorry looking over, if you have parents that you're looking after these things can be quite challenging to fit in and then know exactly what to fit in first and how to kind of create a system so you know how to go about it, you know what I mean? And making sure that you actually do it weekly. So I'm just gonna give you a quick idea about what I do and then, you know, see if it fits in line with something you think you can do to be able to get you started in your journey. So as you know, the process is you're finding a property to transact on, whether it be to do a buy to let or do a buy to sell, or whether you want to source it onto someone else, you want to get in the habit of having a steady flow of properties, potential properties coming in, a steady flow of offers happening, and then a steady flow of offers being accepted. And then you're doing whatever it is you're doing with them, whether it be accepted on a rent to rent, accepted on a buy to let, accepted on you know uh, a buy to sell. You you know you want to have that process down packed. So first thing first is the way how I like to look at it, generally I actually have KPIs, I work from KPIs, but if you're new you may not have KPIs to start off with and therefore you know you may not be able to work with KPI straight away but I would advise that if you are going to get started it would be good to at least start with some form of target so if you find your KPIs are too little or too much then you can you know change them accordingly but having starting off with something does help so when I first started off I started off with 10 properties and I quickly realized that's not going to be enough 10 properties a week viewings and I realized that's not going to be enough if I want to achieve my goals so I had to up it to 40 and then that became a lot more um, better but 40 a week there wasn't enough properties to do 40 a week so I then had to reduce that down again and go to around 15 which was quite good because 15 viewings a week is 60 viewings a month and that's quite a lot of properties uh, and then you want to offer it an, on a proportion of those so typically how my week looks is so on Monday is collection day and that's when you're going through all the online protocols you're calling all the agents this is the day where you're trying to find properties that are suitable and I collect those all on an Excel spreadsheet now fortunately you can outsource this type of work you can outsource it to a VA so if you don't want to do that type of work yourself you can outsource it to a VA and they can go and do all that stuff you would have done and um put that on an excel spreadsheet with you know the name of the property not the name the name of the road the you know the hat the amount of bedrooms the art skin price the name of the agent the call and have a spreadsheet that's detailed like that which is how mine looks and you just you would just then get an excel spreadsheet of all these potential properties now that's something you can do you want to go that extra step further now properties on the surface that may look good immediately as you see it once you do a bit of desktop due diligence you'll realize that it's not that good after all so once you can make that determination you can then take some of those properties away so when when you first do this it looks like you have loads of properties to view and then you quickly realize that no you don't because a lot of them are not suitable for whatever reason they may not be suitable but for whatever reason so then on that same Monday I would book in all those viewings book them in and I'd book them in for Tuesdays or Wednesdays so that's the next day or the day after obviously sometimes you can't get viewings for Tuesdays or Wednesdays for whatever reason so if you have to do Thursday and Friday then that's fine those are the days when you have to just have to do them but in, ter in terms of you setting up a system on how you work so you can leave your Thursdays and Fridays free for other things which there are plenty of other things to do you want to get in a habit of only doing viewings on particular days so Tuesdays and Wednesdays days are viewing days and um, you book them in for those days and that way you can organize your time you could do back to back and you're not spending as much money on petrol because trust me when you're doing viewings this stuff adds up it adds up so much when you're having to go out and um, 
you know, do so many viewings, particularly if you're not transacting on properties. If you're transacting, that's good. There's still a lot more cost that comes out before you get to start having an income coming in when it comes to property. But nonetheless, at least that if you're um, doing these viewings, you want to do them where they're back to back and you're already in the area. So you're sorting out viewings where you're already in the area for, and that's ideal. Um, so from there on Tuesdays and Wednesdays you do your viewings now after that you want to do your due diligence so you can say you can do your due diligence in the evening or afterwards right but if you don't have time to do it on that day maybe you're working full time then you can do it the next day but the aim is to do it as quickly as possible because you are wanting to get your offer in as quickly as possible so you can either arrange for a second viewing if you really like the house and you want to get a builder in you can arrange for a second viewing and again this is where it does get a bit muffled because you can't be so <clears throat> is it strewed a strewed strewed you know what i'm trying to say you can't be as strict as you want to be when it comes to, to doing certain things because sometimes you want other people's time so for example if you are having to get a builder in per se then he can't do tuesday or wednesday then you're gonna have to be flexible but again, it's just structure, right? So get your, do your second viewers and get your builders in ideally for the Wednesday, right? If you can, and if not, and then do a Thursday, right? But then again, if you're having to get your builder to do a number of visits on a few properties, get them, group them together and do that, do it like that. Group them together and get them to do that walk around on a number of properties together so if you have um booked in your second viewings on the, the wednesdays or the thursday you want to do your due diligence the same day and the reason why is because everything's fresh in your mind and it's easy to remember the smaller details as well as that i do walk around with a camera so i suggest you walk around with a camera just so you can have that second look because you might pick up on things you didn't pick up on the first time and that does happen sometimes so have another look at what it is that you you know at your camera at your video recording and check it out again and do your due diligence right off the back i wouldn't leave it do your due diligence and then once you get to your offer number, if you get to that number, um, then put in your offer, okay? But if you don't get to your offer number and you find that that property is no good, once you get to the number that you find that this just doesn't work, then discard of the property and let the agent know you're not interested in this and let them know why. And I'd do that all on the same day. So if you're viewing five properties, it is a lot of work, to, especially to do thorough, deep due diligence on. But again, I've done a video where I have done a walk around and in the end of that video, you get to see and hear the questions that I asked the agent. Now, once you ask the agent those questions, some of your homework already is done. The rest of it can be laptop work or desktop work where you're looking at your sold house prices online registry. But speak to other agents other than the one who's selling it because they are a little bit biased. Obviously, they need to move the property. So their information might be a bit biased. But um, that's it. So if you've got five viewings that you've done today, say Tuesday, right? Today's not Tuesday, but I'm just saying, for example, Tuesday, then you would want to do your due diligence um, on those five properties. But if you have only can do two, then you do the remaining the next day. And if you have viewings lined up for Wednesday, then you do your viewings, you catch up on the three from yesterday, and then you start at least two from that day, from the Wednesday, and then maybe go on to Thursday to do the remainder. So it's you're making sure that you're, you are staying on top of your viewings. I think that's the key thing, you're staying on top of your viewings. Don't do too many if you find that you can't manage it, because it can get a bit, um, you know, it, it can be a lot sometimes when you've got a lot of viewings going on, you're trying to stay on top of them, you want to offer on some, but you have properties that stand out, you have your favourite ones and you go in and say, oh, I love this, I can see exactly what I do, the numbers are clear, and boom, you offer, and that's good. You'll always have those that type of property. So if you have those, great, but if you have ones where you find, I need to do a lot more due diligence on it because the numbers are looking quite tight, then you know, you, you want to take the time to make sure you do that. Because number one is you do not want to be stuck with a house that you just cannot shift for whatever reason, and that's important. So once you have put in your offers and you've emailed the agents for the properties you are interested in, and um, sometimes agents call you to get feedback to see whether or not you was interested in a property, and if you weren't, let them know. Um, and I think it's good just to let them know out of courtesy so they're not wondering. So just call them up and let them know that, thank you for showing me around, but this property is not good and this is why. Or you can do it in email format. An email 
email format is quite good because then they can note down what you've said in that email and put it onto their system. So, you know, they've got a record of exactly what it is you like and what it is you're looking for. So you can do that. And um, from there, once you have put in your offers, then uh, if an offer's accepted, great. But if an offer comes back rejected, you usually want to find out why and then re-offer if you can. But if you can't re-offer and the number has to stay where it is, then that's fine. You just leave your offer on the table for 30 days and then that's it. You know, you, you leave it there. But generally, when you're looking at properties, I, again, try and use Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for sourcing and viewings. And then that leaves Thursday and Friday for chasing up offers, for chasing up solicitors when you've got sales going through, doing any management or maintenance work you might have going on, which might need to be done on Monday sometimes. It depends on how your week looks or how much man manager maintenance work you have. But it just gives you a bit of structure. And as well as that, if you're doing joint venture work, which I presume if you're, if you're trying to find finance to fund these deals, you still have to leave time for that. So Monday, if, you, you know, if you're doing that, then that's a balance and act. And I think I might do another video on how I actually cha um, manage my week where I incorporate doing joint ventures as well. How I look for finance as well as look for properties during one week and how that looks. And I do manage property. So, so there's, and then as well as that project management. So it's full on. But as it, as it, it's the same as with any job, you know, I mean, I was looking at um, what job role did I see the other day? I was looking at university lecturing because I genuinely like teaching and I, I could actually see myself as a university lecturer. And yes, I love property, but there's also a passion for other things. So I was looking at what it takes to become a university lecturer. And, 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 and as well as looking at what it takes, I was looking at what it involves. What does being a university lecturer involve? it's a lot of work it's a lot of work I mean you have to give talks you have to mentor students you have to teach classes you have to find new admissions to come in as well as that you have to if you're a head of year or head of head of uh, head of um, department you get like a little extra round tap which sounded good but then that came with a whole nother set of responsibility i actually realized i thought when i looked at my job and like what i do now i thought right i find properties i find finance i manage tenants and do project management that's four things right four key things and youtube makes it back <laughs> and then mentorships six it's very similar to being a, a, a university lecturer i'm doing a similar thing as i would university lecturing so i was thinking well at least right now you're on your own time right so that was quite interesting. But I was thinking to do, you know, business, uh, be a business lecturer because I genuinely love economics. I love economics. I love business. I watch so much channels, uh, channels, programs, scientific stuff all on this. So that's my passion, y'all, as well as other things. So anyway, I just wanted to share that information with you so you can understand how to approach your week when you are getting started in finding properties and knowing how to manage it all. I really do hope, hope you found it useful. And uh, if you did, let me know down below that you'd want to see the other video of where I now incorporate looking for joint venture finance into my week so you can see how that looks as well. But thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you like this video or if you like this channel and I'll see you in another video. Bye.